Yes, and welcome to another Wonder Hero video. So this is a new update video. So as uh, recently in the uh, Discord, I think today, which is like uh, one or two hours ago, about one hour ago from my current time, they just posted an update on Discord that uh, they will be having an interview with uh, the one of the Wonder Hero, uh, the Wonder Hero CEO, the Chief Executive Officer of the development team, which is uh, Ethan. And they're going to be telecasting this uh, AMA session, that means a live talk session, uh, on the 14th of March, 1 p.m. UTC, or 9 p.m. for GMT plus 8. Which, uh, so the 9 p.m. GMT plus 8 will be Singapore, Philippines, uh, Indonesia time for Southeast Asia. And the UTC, uh, I'm not too familiar, but I think that is for the American time zone, right? So... Yep, so this will be telecast on uh, tomorrow, which is about 24 hours from the time of uh, this and uh, that this announcement was made. So it will be shared on their YouTube channel, which is the Wonder Hero YouTube channel. So I'll just show you here, which is uh, here. That means you will search for Wonder Hero. This is their official uh, YouTube channel, so you can give them a follow. And uh, what else? They're going to be announcing, uh, so they'll be talking about some of the incoming changes they're going to uh, adapt, adopt, sorry, into the game. Uh, and all of these changes actually look pretty good. So I'm going to go through the changes right now. Uh, so the announcement was just posted on today. So posted on five minutes ago when I click the link. Basically in Q2, that means in this coming quarter, which is now currently as of making this video is in March 2022, right? So I think this quarter will be from March until June. So there'll be quarter two. So they'll be imp trying to implement an NFT burn mechanic as well as the biochip game feature and new system upgrades. So uh, meanwhile, I was, while we are talking about that, maybe I can launch the Battlestar game. Okay, and we'll show you guys a bit about the biochips. So uh, it says in the past few weeks, we've gathered vote suggestions. Okay, I'm not going to read everything here because I already read it. I will just uh, summarize is that uh, they have actually gathered votes and suggestions from community channels on here. Uh, Wonder Hero, so if you click the link, wonderhero.productlift.dev, uh, which uh, everyone can, uh, uh, can uh, participate, which is to put suggestions for give feedback on how to improve the game. And then everybody in this, everybody can vote on anonymously. I mean, create an account and then you can vote on it. So the top voted ideas will be probably be implemented by the devs because this is very uh, democratic opinion. That means there's no, um, there's no like too heavy an influence from a single influencer or like just from like the CEO or the dev team. Basically, it is a very democratic uh, suggestion, democratic suggestion as well as a voting uh, voting system whereby the most popular the most popular suggestions among the community will get implemented and this is really really good right so i didn't know about this before so i wasn't aware of this system before but now that i'm aware of this uh, definitely in the next time if they have uh, more stuff i'll probably you know put my vote in as well then uh to contributing ideas so through the list they have discussed on some of the highly voted ideas which they will implement so one of the things that they will put as a priority to implement will be an NFT burn mechanism. So this is the highest voter idea. Basically, they are moving ahead with a burn mechanism which involves combining the NFTs. So I think combining, what it means is that if you have several of the NFTs, there's a chance that you can maybe um, a few pieces of equipment, you can like have two or three of them combined together and then re-roll to for maybe another NFT, right? So they're also exploring the ability to reroll NFT stats. Um, I'm not too sure, maybe you use Horn or WDND to reroll the NFT stats. So we'll share more. So they, I mean, they are still in development, so are, the devs are still considering it, like how they can implement it. So Infinite War and Assist Mode will... Uh, definitely this Infinite War and Assist Mode is actually down. So I also load up the game itself to show you. I'll load, up, load it up on the emulator. So in final one, assist mode is actually down until further notice. Basically, I mean, it's quite obvious uh, why they are reducing it because the Wonder Hero Marketplace, uh, I have seen in my recent videos as well, has tanked a lot. 
And yes, thanks so much. The, basically, the problem comes from oversupply of NFTs and not enough demand. Because obviously, with the crypto downturn, as well as the drop in price of Horn and the DND due to due partially to the crypto downturn. So the interest in the game is a lot weaker, right? So a lot a lot less people are interested in the crypto space, a lot less people are interested in NFT gaming. And when the ROI, when it doesn't look like the game is gonna earn much money, definitely a lot less people are, are want to enter into Wonder Hero because you know the profitability has dropped a lot, a lot. So uh, then part of the reason for that drop in profitability is because of uh, oversupply of NFTs. So since there's oversupply of NFTs, they want to stop Infinite War and Assist Mode, which uh, these two modes actually do supply NFTs because by completing Infinite War, you get a loot box. And by completing Assist Mode, you get another loot box. So those uh, loot boxes will give NFTs such as equipments as well as uh, skins as well as uh, and weapons. And they wanted to put a stamp on that. They wanted to limit the supply of that. So this is why they have actually stopped. I mean, they didn't announce it this way, but this is my personal opinion on it. I think it's uh, quite obvious. It's not just my personal opinion. Other influences. I mean, any player in the in the Wonder Hero in the Wonder Hero community probably more or less can guess that this is why they stopped Infinite War and Assist Mode. So they're implementing this biochip game feature. Uh, basically enhance compatibility of the heroes. That means it can have give your hero uh, stats as well as increase your battle performance. So the biochip feature is not new. It was already present in the original game, which is uh, Battlestar, or the app version, which is uh, Battle Diva Slay Mecha, right? So if you look at here, I will show you here, is that if you look at hero, and I think if you click on, is it the hero data? I need to try okay it's biochip so below here there's a biochip tab and basically you have different levels of biochip which you can craft using the in-game currency which is diamond for battle uh for uh battle star and then you can actually yeah so you can craft and then you can dismantle or you can select an item so you can craft it and then you can try and equip let me see i think it's under hero if i'm not wrong how do i equip? oh it's here so on the hero tab on the right hand side, if you click on biochip, yeah, so you can put in biochips onto the the hero, right? And these biochips actually will have uh um like they will buff healing. So they basically they buff stats, right? So this one buffs basic attack and resist, this buffs crit damage, this buffs ultimate resist, this buffs critical resist, this buffs hit points. This one buffs attack and this one buffs uh, resist. So basically you have different kinds of biochips that give you different stat boosts. And there's different levels of biochips, like all these are level one. So you can see that the, the buff percentage as well as the uh, the numerical amount is very, very low. But obviously, as you've seen in the biochip tab, you can actually craft uh, biochips of a higher level. And obviously for the gacha game itself, to craft a biochip of the higher level, you have to spend a lot more of their in-game currency, which is uh, diamond. And I suspect that this will, uh, like if you're gonna, if they're gonna implement this directly into Wonder Hero, they're probably gonna request the player to spend Horn and the DND so that they can burn away the token in order to craft this, right? So that you will actually cost the player a significant amount to like craft a high level biochip in order to equip onto their hero to improve his stats. And I think the biochips have uh, combinations as well. For example, if you have a few, uh, like maybe a white biochips, you combine a few white biochips, you get some additional stat boosts for hit points, or maybe, yeah, probably for hit points. And then if you combine a few black biochips, you get additional stat boosts to attack and so on. So it uh, gives incentive for the players to either go for an all-in build, that means maybe go all in on black biochips to boost attack or go all in on white biochips to boost tankiness right and hit points or go in all in on dawn biochips to boost defense stat or resistance and so on and so forth so it gives variation to the builds so basically yeah the biochip feature is not something new it's just that is it was already present in the existing game and they have yet to implement it into wonder hero and they have yet to like find uh, what is the way to like? Uh, what is the cost to purchase or to craft the biochips per se? Okay, so U system upgrade feature. So this is not the U system that we know. That means it's not the 
uh, staking features is not like uh, the U system, they name it that way, is actually for the scholarship system, it's for the guild system. So for the guild system, I'm not going to go through because um, most of the players looking into this, you are probably not a manager. I don't think there are many, many, there are that many managers in Wonder Hero. There are probably a few guilds that you know, will benefit from this. So it's basically for like the, the guild's highest manager, so to say. So if you're a scholar, if you're just an individual player, the, all this is you know, irrelevant to us, right? Basically, they are like simplifying the system for like NFTs can transfer within the guild, easier to make it easier for managers to sell their scholars NFT and for easier for like, I don't know, to pay, to make the percentage pay cut for between scholars and NFT and so on. Game balancing with optimizing the heroes looking over performance. Uh, this one, yeah, I mean, it's just a very general statement. So we don't know what they're going to do there. So yeah, maybe they're going to balance some of the like strongest heroes and the items. Anyway, some of their in-game, um, the item descriptions are actually bugged as well. Like I mentioned in one of my previous video that the Celeste four-star weapon, the in-game description is actually bugged. Like rather than stealing 5% of the enemy of the sacrifices, maximum hit point is actually steals 50%. So 10 times more of the uh, enemy of the opponent's maximum hit point pool. So it's actually a really OP weapon, but if you're just looking at the in-game description on that item, you will you will never know, right? You never know that it's actually that OP. Okay, then other than that, token burning event to be announced. So since the launch of One Hero, one hundred percent of the marketplace revenue has been reinvested to re to purchase Horn. Um, this is what they say, but I don't know whether there's any way for us to check on this then this is the upkeep on the horn prices. But even if they did do this, it's still not enough to you know, keep horn up because you, as, as you see on the horn price has been you know, dropping quite a, fair, quite a fair bit. So it features such an NFT burn and digital token utilities for horn and the PRD rolling out. Da, 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 the, the planning of the token burn event. So this is some nice cool stats. Uh, to date, a total of 26.9 million horn and 59,000 WND were used for upgrading. So hence the same amount will be burned and moving forward, so the same amount will be burnt. It says will be burnt. So that means this horn and the DND is actually not burnt yet. So uh, I'm not sure what happened to this horn and the DND. Maybe the you know, the developers converted it to USDT for their own profits, or maybe they you know, reissued the you no know, whatever the the players spend for horn and the DND. Maybe they use it to come back into the game and reissue it back to the players. Not too sure, but say that moving forward, this will be burnt. So now they will burn this. So moving forward, all Horn the upgrade will be burnt. This is supposed to be so because everybody is expecting that when the players spend Horn and the D&D to upgrade, they expect that the, the token will actually be destroyed or burnt, so to say. So as uh, there is a between a, there's a balance between burn and issuance. So to keep the supply of Horn and WND in check. Uh, expected to give the current price a little jump start. Um, this is very hard to say. Like uh, obviously any developer or anyone, even us as players as well, we hope that all these measures will give the token price a jump start. But in reality, what can jump start a token is really down to the you know the trading, right? So if the news goes out and the uh, traders were willing to buy the WND. And there are a lot of traders that are willing to buy the BND, it will push the price up. But if not, then the price will actually either stay stagnant or go lower. Because no matter what, the trading market is what drives uh, asset prices. So like this, I mean, fundamental, um, fundamental news like this, basically they don't affect the token price. What affects the token price is that the traders, they act on the news and they like they buy the token and then they a lot of traders buy the token together and then they keep driving up the price uh because of the news so the news itself doesn't drive token prices so it says blah 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 continuing for uh improving in front of the hero looking for brilliant idea suggestions so if you like to contribute uh head over to wonderhero.product.dev which is the link here so you can see here so if you like to contribute this is a good place so game suggestions you can lock in and you can probably like add a feedback and then the feedback will be voted upon by all the members in this forum, so to say. So this is a good thing. 
to avoid existing ideas or if you have a great suggestion add your idea in there let the community members vote on it so okay so that's uh, the rest is yeah yeah usually ending statement okay so that's it for this news video and if you are watching uh this video before they actually did do the ama i would suggest you give one the hero main youtube channel either subscribe or at least try and tune in to their their uh, so-called their ama with their ceo uh, in about uh which is uh let us go back to the time zone again the time that they're gonna announce it wait it's under the announcement um, 14th of March, 1 p.m. UTC or 9 p.m. at plus 8 GMT. So it's 9 p.m. Um, Singapore, Indonesia, Philippines, Southeast Asian time. Uh, also same as uh, Malaysia, Vietnam, like the same time zone, right? Hong Kong and all this, this plus 8 GMT. And then or 1 p.m. UTC on 14th of March. So probably tune in to there. And yep, hope to see you guys next time. Thank you.